Hello and welcome. I know you. I know what you're doing there, Nate Sharp. I hear you in the background trying to set me off. I don't think you can. I'm a professional. My name's Mark Humes, and I'm the Dungeon Master for Knights of Evening Star uh, <laughs> here on twitch.tv uh, forward slash D&D. Hi, welcome back to Knights of Evening Star. Maybe it wasn't Nate. We're going to cut to my wonderful friends uh, who are playing in this game. You can see them now, hopefully. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by Jonathan Indovino, a.k.a. Shady Penguin, Nate Sharp, Anna Prosser, and Mika Button. Nate, you've been muted this whole time. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I've been <laughs> muted this whole time. I don't I don't know what you were talking about. I don't know. Well, oh, crazy. I just must be hearing things. Someone's going making on. farting noises. Are you yeah. is your I place haunted, Mark? Yeah, yeah. What? I've got a fart ghost here, uh, you know. I think I I, well, I thought we were just gonna tell Mark his house was haunted. Oh. Why we gotta blame me instead? Oh, I mean, yeah, the ghost, the fart ghost. Yeah, mm -hmm. fart yeah. ghost, all, yeah. all responsible. Mm -hmm. Uh we got snacks, we got dice. We got D and D. We are good to go. We're here to bring you an awesome D and D time. In uh, well, normally we'd be in the nation of Cormir, which is part of the Forgotten Realms, but right now we're in somewhere else in a magical day spa, playing through my adventure, uh, The Price of Beauty in Candlekeep Mysteries, which is a D and D adventure book, and I've tweaked it for these fine folks and their wonderful characters that they've made, and that's it. Wonderful intro. We'll see you guys Thanks. next week. Bye, guys. See, Bye, see you. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, uh, and then we're out. Yeah, done. Uh, yeah, that's it. There's, there's nothing else to really to tell you. I've got a little recap planned. Uh, we are jumping back into battle um, as things... Ooh. Uh, things didn't go as to plan as I think you guys would have <laughs> liked um, in the last session. So. What are you talking about? If everything's going fine. Everything's fine everything's a-okay uh so yeah we're just gonna jump in i got a little recap and then we're gonna play some dungeons and dragons is everyone good with that let's do it i'm good... unmuted now let's do it i yeah, was trying so hard to find that button banging yeah i like it fantastic well last time our heroes of Evening Star uncovered the dark truth about the Temple of the Restful Lily. Once a temple dedicated to the goddess of love and beauty Sunni, it has since been defiled and taken over by a coven of hags, disguising themselves as three beautiful elven sisters. Under this guise and using the temple to lure in individuals, the hags have forged magical bargains with a number of them, robbing them of specific traits in twisted reversals of their own desires. Fearing for their blade captain, Elissa, who had been who was being seen by the sisters for some transformative ritual, the party attempted to sneak into the hag's private tower and distract them, giving a chance to rescue Elissa and discover the secret of whatever magic they were using. However, on sending Clive to knock on the door to the private chamber, the hags immediately uh, angered, uh, used magic to dominate Clive's mind and forced him to reveal what he knew as well as took him prisoner. The others fled into the temple and the day spa itself, seeking safety in the magical pool uh, and the water spirit Sirena. However, the hags have dispatched their own minions to try and encourage the party to leave that place uh and clive is attempting a desperate escape fighting off an animated statue with a frying pan uh and the rest of the party fending off the spa resort staff who like the temple are more than they seem well i don't so, know if i would call it desperate i mean you've got no I, weapons i think it's no, i have a frying, on your frying pan own. frying pan is a weapon we've established you watched many Tangle? years in video it games is a, yeah. it was an improvised weapon um it's it, you know it's a fair attempt a fair yeah no yeah it is yeah but you are desperate to escape it is in that sense a desperate escape I mean, uh, can you say he's desperate? Like, you don't know his mind. That's true. Like, maybe that's he's true. not don't desperate. Words in his Clive's mouth. just having a whale of a time. That's I true. Maybe. We don't know his story. We don't know his life. Mm -hmm. True. All right. I take Are it you back. desperate, Clive? Uh, Clive's pretty desperate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, now we know. Right, we okay. Now but we you know. you didn't know that. I didn't know that. You're true. I should have asked. I should have left out any descriptive word. Until I knew. How dare uh, you assume my desperation levels? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Art thrives in specific language, Mark. Yes, Don't that's use true. the driest and... scientific terms ever yep. to describe anything in fantasy. Yeah, that's we'll <laughs> we'll dog. note. 
is really uh, helping. Would it. you like yeah. me to describe uh, your current situations in dry, austere language of uh, only using the <laughs> no, barest not facts at all. and limits? No. Now no, that don't. now that we've that scolded case, our DM, right? Yeah. This can only go well for us. In that case, I will give you overly elaborate and descriptive, fanciful descriptions of where you all currently are. I mean, um, I to guess. Remind you of your location. I guess. I guess. Uh, <laughs> we currently have in the uh, white marbled stone steam rising from the hot spring waters, uh, Roman-esque baths of this day spa. We currently have Azara, Agnes, and Tarkal um, allied with the water naiad Sirena fending off five of these spa resort staff members uh they don't have weapons but they have attacked you with their fists with their claw like with their nails and they possess a inhuman strength that is causing their blows to be particularly harmful um you have seen witness as azara attempted to use lightning magic on them seemingly to no effect just absorbed into these strange metal parts of their body um as they have done so Meanwhile, uh, up on the first floor of the hag's private tower, having escaped from the confines that he'd been placed in, a kind of curved half room um, with these portraits, these beautiful paintings depicting these, these individuals. Uh, Clive has managed to free himself from those bonds, bust through the door, and is emerged into a very grotty, grimy kitchen. Uh, where there is a spiral staircase heading down, but the way is currently blocked by this animated statue of a winged elven individual. Um, having grabbed a frying pan, uh, Clive is attempting to engage them all in close combat, leaving some of these other victims, you assume, of the hags in the previous chamber, one of which being Elissa, who you've only briefly glimpsed clive you the others haven't really seen her but you you've seen that there is definitely some sort of disfigurement some sort of transformation has taken place she does not seem to be the same sort of person that she was before um and kind of retreated away from you uh and that is where we kick off we currently have a wonderful split combat where i'm running two combats at once um which is going on uh and do remind me if i have forgotten anything if you if you think that like i had this spell active or i was doing this please do remind me because uh it is the way that we do this it's it's i'm a little bit behind because i've i've had a lot of DD on this week um so do just <sighs> shout and remind me what's going on all right uh, uh i believe that i had heated metal on yes all those that I, I knew that okay. somebody had a heat metal spell i assumed it was mm -hmm, agnes mm -hmm. i can't remember on which of the constructs it is i'm going to assume the one that's taken a lot of damage um Probably. but if i Sense. yeah that yeah, because there's three of them that have only been barely injured, seemingly by the water that Sirena, um, she seems to have some sort of power to cause it, uh, to make it harmful to certain individuals. There are three of them that have taken a little bit of damage. One which is heavily damaged. Um, I think Tarkle's managed to strike it, um, and Agnes, that's probably the one you've got heat metal on. And then there's another one which looks to be mostly injured, but is still in a, in a strong fighting sort of capability. Uh, meanwhile, for Clive, this statue, you hit it with all your strength, and it, it does seem to be pretty resistant to your attacks, and it doesn't seem to be particularly injured at this point. Um, as a point, you are on the first floor as well, Clive. There are a couple of grimy, kind of dirt-covered windows, um, but apart from that, the only way down you can see is this spiral staircase. The spiral staircase also goes up, you notice, as well. Um, and I think we're going to jump back in. Uh, the way that we're doing it is on Clive's initiative. I do all of Clive's combat, and then we'll drop down into uh, the the sort of other combat um, as we do so. Clive, you do hear the sounds of somebody or creatures moving around in the room that you've just left, the one with the prisoners and the paintings. Um, you hear the little kobold like, Ah, oh, the statue, the statue, he's come to life. Uh, the lion man, he needs help. Come on, we, we need to try and help him, please. And like you can hear the kobold kind of like squealing and squeaking, and you hear some murmurings, but that's about it. Um, Clive, what would you like to do? I believe you were raging. I was. So I so so the pan's not really doing too much, it seems. You can see that this thing, whatever magical, whatever is animating it, this magical stone, 
this mundane weapon is not it's not as effective as you'd like it to be it is chipping and causing some damage but the creature's resistant to non-magical attacks i don't mind you, you, you're a D player you know what it means <laughs> okay i don't need cool. to beat around the bush oh you can't some sort of strange resi resistance resistance <laughs> Okay, um, there's not not much else I can do, so I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna swing again. Sure. I mean, um, if you also, I, I know we don't always use this. If you want to jump onto uh, roll twenty, I know we don't always use it, but I do have maps. If you do want a little bit more of a mm. kind of like spatial awareness of where you guys are and what's nearby and stuff like that as well, um, you know, don't feel free to use that if you would like to, but don't feel you're obliged to. Um, looking around, yeah, it's pretty tight. So that's the other thing, Clive. Is this this area that you're in is really about ten feet wide and is kind of a half curved tower. So it's really quite close quarters like if you want to try and move past this thing um you're going to either have to do it via disengaging or just trying to risk being it attacking you and stuff like that but if you just want to attack it go ahead yeah i i think clive thinks the best bet is to just try and annihilate this thing so there's a clear path out sure so whoop so that is a uh 13 and we're doing just a club right yeah, so it's a, okay. it's the same as if it was a club. Yeah, the frying pan. Okay, so then that's a uh, twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one hits. Yeah, the 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 you know thick uh, cast iron pan smashes into the stone, and you know chunks of it come loose. But all right, nah, definitely just... doesn't uh, cause as much damage as you would hope. That's going to be seven bludgeoning. Seven with rage damage. Oh, I oh I forgot. I was I keep forgetting. Thank you. Sorry. So ten. So 10? Okay, so half yeah. to five. Um, okay. So again, you kind of slam the pan in and it causes a few chips and pebbles to break free. But the statue, completely unfazed expression, it's quite unnerving. It's like this beautiful elven man with wings with this serene expression and it's just beating the crud out of you. It's just like blood all over its fists where it's been pummeling you. Um, and yeah, it just it seems to take the blow. Uh, second okay. attack. Second attack. Uh, we're gonna, mm, I don't want a reckless act. No, I do. He, I don't want a reckless. He does. So we're gonna. Okay. So that one, let's see. That's a, blah, 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 blah. that's an 18. Let's see if I crit. Let's see if you get that crit. Big barbarian crit. Nope. 18. Does 18. Uh, 18 is a hit. Sorry. I'm just, okay, cool. white, white text friend is asking me. Uh, a question. I don't think so, white text friend. I think it's okay. I think we can just narratively describe it. And also, if people would like to see the map, they can purchase Candlekeep Mysteries and you can see the full adventure <laughs> map involved. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Available to you. Nate. Cool. So that is uh, three, five, and yeah. oh, that's another ten. Another ten. Perfect. So another five points of damage. Um, but yeah, just slamming into this thing seems to be completely unfazed um to an extent uh end of your turn would you like to do anything else you have your bonus action you have a move action um i'm loading up roll 20 to see this uh it's a little room yeah imagine space. a sort of half of a uh half of a circle um is the, what the the space occupies like it's half of this circular tower the stairwell is in the very center um but the doorway is just behind the statue um so it's blocking the path you can see that there are grimy muck covered filth covered tables um with earthenware pottery and a few bits of cooking utensils things like that kind of scattered around um it's kept in a very poor condition um and you can see all sorts of bizarre growths mushrooms funguses mosses strange plants and things like that around and then there is a there is a kind of grubby window um directly to your south just behind the statue you can see this kind of uh, partially boarded up grubby window that looks out onto the grounds behind the temple noted i okay. will stay put okay for now all right uh you hear uh, a little like the little pitter patter of little scaled footsteps behind you um as you see the little kobold 
kind of like eh, 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 kind of whips around white scales uh glittering blue eyes um as they kind of round the corner and look around they scrummage around on one of the tables and they find like a little knife like a little fruit knife basically um and they're just like we we need to help him it's our one chance we might be able to get out of here and then it's going to come and <clears throat> try and dig this little uh fruit knife into the statue and try and break off part of its leg or something like that uh, as the little kobold does so uh using their little stat block here um boop, boop, boop. they have an ally next to them so this will be a sneak attack if it hits which it does oh. uh, d4 plus 2d6 for a sneak attack but it is only mundane damage so that's going to be a whopping two points of damage from the dagger but the sneak attack is nine for a total of 11 uh which is going to be half to five um, that is their one attack. And then they're going to use their cunning action to disengage and back off from the little creature. So they kind of come running in and then they kind of scramble to the back of the room, hiding behind Clive, just like, hey, you, you've got him, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like your spirit, lad. Uh, I guess so. Uh, it's less, actually. Um, and yeah, uh, they, they kind of like run out uh yeah it's kind of hard to tell with kobolds it's just like this little scaly person uh the statue completely ignores the small kobold that's just run up and guns for you um it's just going to swing these two you know beautifully carved statuesque hands uh into wide punches um that is going to be a 17 on the first one to hit mm -hmm. Oops, nine. 16 so that would normally be 20 points of damage but you are raging so it's half to 10 um so All that right. first swing you feel like you know blood kind of spurts out a little bit as this hand slams in and then it's going to kind of punch you in the gut uh that is only going to be a 14 that doesn't and that doesn't reaction unstable backlash okay so let's see let's see it something good uh, actually know what with the new uh uh, the new, oh my gosh, what's it called? Underdark mode on my D&D Beyond oh. sheet and the new uh, cool dice that I have on my account, I'm going to roll digitally. Oh, wow, it sounds like it's never been easier. Wow. <laughs> it's never been easier to play D&D on that. How do I do that? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's never been easier. <laughs> and that is, where is it? All right. Oh, it's hold on. It's, it it's rendering the roll. Okay. <laughs> that is a three. An intang intangible spirit, which looks like a flump or a pixie. Oh no. Uh oh. Here's within five feet of one creature of your choice. I would, would you like, like it to be a flump or a pixie? Let's go with flump this time. Okay. Uh, the flump, this kind of undulating jellyfish, seems to just manifest in the air with these kind of long tendril eye stalks. Um, uh, if you've played Mass Effect, I always imagine them as a little bit like the Hanar with these long uh, jellyfish. Uh, and you just hear this like, surprising, where have I found myself now? <laughs> ah, something seems amiss. <laughs> and it just seems to be floating next to the statue. This this one doesn't seem to be in any sort of discomfort or pain like the pixie was. Well, it's going to explode, so. <laughs> so when does it explode? At the end of At the, the end turn? of the current turn. <laughs> yep, okay. Yep, that's now. <laughs> so. All right. Oh, no! So, deck save. Yes. Uh, I, I, would, I would make the save too, wouldn't I? Uh, you, I, does it say all Each creatures? Cre each creature within five feet. So you, I guess you get to pick where you summon it. So you could summon it behind the statue so it doesn't hit you. That would be great. Okay, sure. Uh, the saving throw is a uh, whopping seven. This thing okay. it does not move particularly quickly. So then that's going to be a, what is it, D6? D6 force damage. Oh, force damage let's, is very good. Let's, let's, roll, let's roll that again digitally. Hold on, hold Must on. Must wait for dice to render. Loading that dice. Is a, that is a three. Three points of damage, hey, and it's not resisted because it's force damage. Um, the flump just kind of, it seems to just begin pulsing rapidly like a strobe light. Oh dear. And then pfft, it kind of just erupts in like a burst oh of force um, as oh it wow. sends the, the statue kind of stumbling forwards. Um, you can see that the statue, yeah, parts of it have broken off still does not look to be in any way phased by this damage that you've caused it. Uh, so that is what is happening in the tower. Meanwhile, 
camera cut to dramatic cut to uh, a kind of more chaotic scene. We see in the bathhouse, uh, our three heroes, we see Agnes, Azar, and Tarkal all kind of stood together, sort of covering each other, defending each other in a line, but surrounded by these hotel staff. Some of them have like got pieces of their flesh blown away, um, and you can see sort of metal coils and, and rods, um, pieces of twisted bone inc inscribed with runes throughout their bodies, um, and they are just manically trying to tear you guys apart. They're splashing through the water, there's steam all around you, um, you know, there's blood now mixing in with the water of the day spa, um, as it becomes a much more uh, chaotic scene, and we're going to start with Azara. Um, I am going to cast spiritual weapon. Okay. At the second level. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and then I'm going to use my bonus action to. What is the the construct closest to me? Uh, so you currently have three in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, so imagine that you are stood like almost waist deep in this pool mm -hmm. and there are there's a line of these people just around you, Tarkal and Agnes beside you, but they have surrounded you guys. So there's at least three within striking distance of you right now, Azara. Uh, okay, whichever one looks the most hurt, I'm going to go for. Sure, okay. Yeah, that'll be the one next to Agnes, I think, the one that's um, taken all this heat metal damage and stuff. 18, does that hit? Uh, 18 will hit. Yeah, these guys don't seem particularly uh, nimble, um, and their forms are pretty pretty weak, but they, they possess a, a very uh, resolute uh, mindset. That is going to be six points of force damage. Six points of force damage, okay. Um, and can I move further back without provoking an opportunity attack? You won't be able to. They are next to you. They're they are right up into you. Yep, they're right up on your face. So you would need to disengage as an action to move away. Okay, that's it. Okay, cool. Um, every, n nothing else. No other things. Well, I if did not, an action, Agnes. and I did a bonus action. Sure. There you go. That's so it. That's and no movement. So we got Agnes next, and then the enemies, and then Tarkle. You are after the water spirit. So you are at the very end of the round. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I do have Candor summoned. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, first off, or I guess I does make a little heat... token for Candor actually. Does um heat metal happen at the end of my turn, or does it matter? Uh, read the spell. It normally says in there. Um, I Good can't point. remember specifically. Heat metal. Um, I've drawn a really poor little bird um on the roll twenty map to be oh. Candor. <laughs> Oh, it's like a bonus action. Okay, so it's a bonus action to kind of trigger turns. it. Yeah, there you go. And I can use the bonus action. That spell. Just... Right. So I'm just going to start with the bonus action. I'm just going to sure, keep makes sense. heating. And that's, uh, let's see, I cast that at second level, I think I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that would make sense if for the amount of damage that this thing had taken. Yeah, and it was 2d8, so it's going to take another 11. Okay, with that heat metal damage, uh, you see that the one that Azara's uh, fan, this kind of fan of feathers strikes, um, you watch as it heats up from the inside. All these met this metal endoskeleton begins to glow red hot. The flesh sloughs off of its body in these like grotesque chunks, and you just see it kind of it just begins vibrating and kind of shaking its body around and the, as the metal breaks and splinters um, within its body, this thing collapses to the ground. Uh, unmoving well seems like heat metal works pretty well so <laughs> i guess i'm gonna cast heat metal on another one yeah um, so uh which one would you like to cast it on there is one which does look quite injured and then the other three are all pretty um unaffected so far i'm actually going to take one of the unaffected ones are any of them like in close contact with each other um not enough that heat metal would affect both unfortunately heat how metal close am i to any of them uh, so you currently have one to your sort of like side, like one on your flank, and then one at a diagonal next to Azara, but both are within melee range of you. Both of them can reach out and attack you. Because what um, I want to do is mm -hmm. I want to cast heat metal on one, and then I want to 
shove it into the other one. <laughs> right, okay. So the best one to do that one is the one um, in front of Azara. You could try and heat metal that one and try and shove it into the one, the next one in the sequence, basically. All right, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, I cast heat metal on that one. And then I guess I would roll a athletics check. Uh, I think that this would be a straight up strength v strength. Yeah, so not athletics, just strength. D20 plus just your strength modifier. Which um, is nothing. Huzzah. Yep. And then I'll do oh, the same. Oh, not 20. Oh, I well, golfed I had to that roll guy in. in. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the heat metal goes off. So do the 2d8 damage to the first one. And then I'll have the second one take 1d8 fire damage. Because oh, like the heat metal is take... inside its body. I forgot the extra d8 for my enhanced bond. Okay. All right. So that'll take 3d8. 3d8, cool. Uh, so that's then... 17 for that one. 17 on that one. Okay, so that will do that too if I have that as B. Uh, 17 fire damage to that one. And then do me 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier for the next one. Um, and we'll kind of make that the, the balanced out. Because as it connects with it, you can see that the metal inside this thing, inside this fake person, um, as it hits the next one over, there's some contact, but their fleshy bodies, like this right. fake flesh they have is protecting them. So we'll just have it do a little bit less damage to the next one. So How much was that? Five. Five points. Okay. Perfect. And that one doesn't have an extra D8. Uh, I would say no, because it's on the casting of the spell, you get the right. extra D8. This is that like an sense. environmental effect. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it, it, you know, it's a free bit of damage for like shoving him into uh, this other guy uh, as he kind of stumbles. And you can see that the first one does get knocked prone as well. It actually goes under the water as it kind mm -hmm. of careens into its mate. So the one next to Azara is currently prone okay. uh, as well. And, okay. and then uh, I'll add insult to injury with Candor, oh. and Candor will cast Flame Seed on okay. the more injured one. Sure, okay. So that's gonna do 1d6 plus four plus a d8, I guess. It has to hit as well, I believe. You have to roll to hit with it first. Oh, that's right. Plus eight to hit, hold on, yeah. we'll do that. Which first. you probably will. <laughs> These things are not, <laughs> they are not like agile, nimble fighters. All right, that's a 17. 17 hits, yeah. Do, do, do. And that's gonna do. 10 fire damage. 10 points of fire damage. Hey, the flame seed careens into it and you hear like popping, uh, popping and bubbling skin and, and flesh and bone as this, this stuff. They never scream. None of them make a sound throughout all of this fighting. They don't scream. They don't cry. They don't rage. It's just pure silent, but you can see their faces are twisted in rage um, as I, the, the flame seed kind of like pops into its back and it's like, ah. I may have added, because actually I added the D8 to that, but I think Candor's probably doesn't get that, right? No, only I when I cast so, no. spell. So yeah, that's minus two. So that's only okay. uh, eight damage. Sorry, I'll just add two. I'll heal the enemy two okay. hit points easily enough. Thank you. Cool. Uh, anything else, like this? A great turn. Like nice, nice use of shoving no, people I, around. No, I feel and stuff. very satisfied with how smooth I look right now. I'm like yeah. piling up the enemies, just popping fire everywhere. Pop, pop, pop. It's great. Absolutely. Good. Um, the and and in recognition of that, uh, having sense that you are creating this intense amount of heat, uh, the one that you knocked over stands back up, and the one to your side and that one are going to turn on you. All both making two attacks against you. Um, then the on. other two. Uh, are going to turn on Tarkle because I think at the moment they kind of Azara's like lightning spell didn't hurt them, so they're kind of focusing their attention on their two major threats that they can kind of detect at the moment. So this is going to be four attacks uh, against Agnes and then four attacks against Tarkle. Um, I said bring it on, but I really can't take attacks. So well, <laughs> you know, do I get a bonus for feeling myself? <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. we're just okay. gonna, I'm just going to make some attack rolls here. I'm just going <laughs> to swiftly move on. Just checking. Uh, just checking. Um, 17 to hit Agnes. Yeah, that hits. All right, well, do, I'll just literally roll all the attacks and then I'll do the damage one at a time. Uh, second attack is, ooh, uh, 23. Yep, that'll hit. Second one is only an 8. The third one, sorry, is only an 8, so that's a miss. The 8 does not hit. Ha! And then the fourth one is a miss, as I rolled another eight. So the first two attacks, uh, these, however, as soon as they're the, the super, the superhuman strength of these creatures, whatever they are, when it hits you, they hit hard. Um, that's going to be uh, 13 points of damage from the first one. And then, oh, not so bad. Uh, only nine points of damage on the second attack. So I rolled pretty okay. badly. Um, but yeah, they 
like kind of like grabbing you and it's not just like punches these guys are like grabbing you and shoving you under the water and then they're like punching you uh they're like digging their fingernails into your flesh trying to like rip it apart like they are brutal in their in the way that they're attacking you and then tarkle two of them again set upon you as well they're both they're both gonna do the same thing to you first one is a 23 to hit and it's the next one is a 24 to hit <laughs> Jeez. That one surprisingly does 18, it. 18, 19, yeah, I know. Uh, the next one probably will miss. It's only a 14 on the third. Yeah, it misses. Yep, great. And then the last one, another eight. I like rolling eight today. So two damage rolls. Um, uh, you can decide which one you would like to uncanny dodge. Uh, so that's going to be seven. That's 11 from the first one. Uh, I will uncanny dodge that one. Okay, so you only take five points of damage from that because you half it, rounded down. And then the second attack is going to be of course it's more uh that's going to be 17 points of damage wow. <laughs> you gotta play those odds man yeah um but yeah these again these things just dive on you they're trying to grab you like punching you in the in the chest and in the sides like digging their nails into your arms just trying to do as much damage as they possibly can do um as they just go to town uh sirena kind of in very sort of fey sort of like oh oh no kind of calling out um she attempts to cast a spell uh on these these assembled people but it has no effect i can't they don't have minds of their own my illusions my enchantments they don't work on them i i don't know what they are um and then she's just going to make the water harmful so they're all going to take a d10 of damage basically That's uh, helpful. for six points of damage to each of them So you can see that the water, almost like acid, is burning their flesh and their bodies. Um, but you find it all thoroughly pleasant and warm as it has always been. Um, and we go to Tarkle at the end of the round. Uh, Tarkle being punched in the chest by con Construct will call out and say, Greensong, this really is quite the show. I, are you going back on, our, on your word or do you not want our help anymore with your sisters? Sure. Make a deception check. You've right. done this once before. Uh, yeah, I just wanna... you, you haven't really heard much. Like you I know that's... some bickering and stuff. Yeah. Oh, the 19 plus four. So 23. Yeah. Uh, whatever is happening outside, you're not sure if you've been fully heard, um, but you can definitely... Uh, I've just realized I told you guys to use roll 20 and I didn't move you to the correct map. So I've had you on the wrong map this entire time just tell me so there me. aren't uh big like octopus no. things here. I, listen, I, like, I may have dropped map. some live comms i dropped some live comms i was gonna push the issue um uh, never mind <laughs> um the whatever you heard some bickering outside and then it went kind of silent or not silent but as if they had moved away or if there was some you know distance between you you call out again and again, you begin to hear like raised voices, but it's hard to make out exactly what's being said. It's good. It's being muffled by the walls, by distance. Like you can hear kind of <laughs> kind of murmurings, but okay. uh, they're definitely having some sort of effect. But okay, these so things are not stopping. Since they're distance, is that like my action? Me, me is talking no, free. No, no, okay, cool, no, nice. No, you can call uh, out while you're doing all this stuff. Sweet. Then I will just try to stab the one that gave me the most hurt. Sure. Okay. Uh, with my obviously kiss of silver, uh, I rolled a nine plus. Eight, I think it's plus eight, so seventeen. Yeah, plus eight. Yeah, still hits. Cool. Yeah. And I have an ally within range, so sneakies. Yes, absolutely. And did that come up for me? Why didn't I get to see that? Oh, it came up in roll twenty. Uh, so nineteen damage. Nineteen points of damage. Uh, and this is a magical weapon. Uh, the the kiss of silver slices through these constructs with ease. Um, they're they're fake flesh, and these kind of inscribed rune inscribed bones easily uh, break under the the magical power of the dagger, just cutting through. And, and the the poison does nothing. I'm assuming. Uh, that's that is an excellent point. The poison does nothing okay i just checked it uh but yeah you see the the brooch glow you see the same green mist kind of coalesce around the blade but these things don't seem to react to it in any way uh we jump back up to clive of the wild main but clive you are not the first one to go on your side of things um you hear heavier footsteps uh coming from the back room um a figure 
wrapped up in some sort of filthy blanket, kind of almost like a shawl, covering their face, pulled tight around them. But you see one sort of like pretty muscular looking arm kind of still sticking out, kind of bursts out, um, sort of hunched, much shorter, almost like dwarven sized, um, and will with one hand sort of grabs a chair and is going to come up beside you and is going to try and swing this chair like a weapon at the, the gargoyle as well. Um, you see flashes of like long black curly hair and you can kind of see flashes of what looks like a Cormirian armor and tabard but the the cloak kind of covers the rest of them um this is obviously Alyssa and she's gonna make an attack uh that is gonna be a miss on the first one and then with the backswing uh that is a hit uh this is only gonna be a club so I'm just gonna do uh four points of damage uh so half to two um but she will call out as well. You kind of hear like a more sort of rasping voice. Sir Clive, we must get to the others quickly. We must stop these things. I fear that they're going after the others. Uh, and they are going to basically inspire you. You get a D4 to your next attack rolls uh, for the next turn. So they're going to use their leadership ability. Cool. Uh, and it's your go. Uh, so, because I'm I'm looking at the thing here, so there's there's still others in that other room. Yeah, you remember that there was a very very elderly looking dwarf. Like they looked venerable, like ancient. Re they were struggling to move around. Um, there was also a dragonborn woman, but she looked incredibly weak. Like all of her muscles had atrophied, um, and looked like shrunken and and shriveled up. Um, and they didn't look like they were in any sort of condition to fight necessarily. So it would be in good interest to take care of this thing to clear a path for them to leave. For sure, yeah. Or find yeah. some way to disable it or give them like an easy escape path or something would definitely be a, yeah. They, they look like they would be pretty pretty vulnerable. How heavy does this statue look? It's made of stone. Um, it's man-sized. It's like a human-sized statue made of stone. So it's going to be heavy, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that you could lift it or pick it up or push it or move it in some way. I want to try and spear tackle it through that window behind us. <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought I was hoping you'd do that. Um, cool. <laughs> Is that what it's called that... when you like take it with you? Is that a spear tackle? What's a spear tackle? It's like where you'd well, like dive. Just like, head yeah, first. yeah. Just try yeah. to spear okay. through the middle and dive through this window. Oh, I like yeah. to call that the Vin Diesel. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But now I recognize it. Now they say that. <laughs> I Somebody want, at I some point. Emily him to... through the window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Right or and die. Then somebody... And then, and then Clive looks up and it's just like, hags might be strong, but nothing stronger than family. <laughs> exactly that. Box a shotgun. <laughs> I has a shotgun now. Yeah. You hear yeah. an engine rooming in the distance. <laughs> How? We're not sure. The family. The family. <laughs> it just dives off. Oh, oh my God. Man. Somebody needs to do the fast and the fear. Somebody needs to write an official D and D adventure using the descent into Avernus vehicle rules to do a yes! fast and the furious oh adventure. Oh my god! Oh I should write my that. gosh! Yes, Mark. <laughs> yes, please, Mark, and let please. Mika and I be in it, please. Sure. I know how much you guys. You know, I know how how important family is to you. So so important. Uh, yeah. <laughs> family One, and cars, uh, man. I'm trying to think one 500 meter dash at a time. I'm trying oh to get into D and D. Uh, okay, Clive. For this, I think the first thing you're going to need to do is make me just an attack roll, as if you were attacking with the club, to like be the spear tackle, um, okay. to see if you can hit, see if this thing like dodges out the way, or if like you just bounce off of it or whatever. So that um, if you'd be... like to be reckless, I'd say you can use reckless attack with this as well. Uh, that was a 25 to hit, so... Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you don't need to worry about that then. Um, yeah, you just spear tackle this thing. You you push it, and I'll say that you push it. Uh, a table goes screeching out the way. You spear tackle it forward. Um, to get it out of the window, make a strength check. You'll have advantage because you're raging. I'll make a strength check, and then basically, yeah, if you succeed, you will push this thing out of the window. Right. If you fail... By a small amount, you'll still push it out the window, but you'll go out with it. And if you fail by a big amount, it might throw you out the window. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Uh, you said advantage? Uh, yes, you would have advantage. Okay. You are raging. So you have advantage on strength checks. That is a nat 20. <gasps> so 28 yep. total. However, fate, fate decrees it. 
However, Clive would absolutely try to go out the window. Yeah, with if you want to, if that's like a choice that you're mm -hmm. like, I'm taking this thing down with me and you're going to ride it down a hundred percent. So yeah, you, you push this thing out and I'd say that with a natural 20 as well, you pin its arms and you stand on top of it. So you don't take any fall damage. This thing's going to basically absorb the full impact of falling to the ground um and then you can just springboard off of it as if nothing had happened basically it, like, um, pins him and just like roars and drools in his face before launching off <laughs> boom just drops down uh so the tower uh i'd say that between the floors is probably a good 30 feet um so this is gonna be 3d6 or all 3d6 damage for me um it's right. gonna be 3d6 bludgeoning damage how uh how stone is his body would that have it, it, his his body is stone but it is magically enchanted stone oh, so that's why it's, it's resistant stone. to like weapons it's probably going to be a little bit resistance to this, this fall as well but it's also now away from all the others and it's going to take a bunch of damage um okay. and you're outside now so let's see three d six and eight that is nine Nine points of damage. Okay, cool. Uh, I will have it do five points of damage. Um, I'll round. I'll round up this time. Um, so it, it slams into the ground, and you can see like it does like fractures and cracks. But whatever spell has created this thing keeps it in place. But you just leap off of it, no harm to yourself whatsoever. You kind of like whoosh, go skidding into the dirt um, as this thing is now prone next to you. Um, Hell yeah! I'd say, by the way, Clive. That would technically just be your action, your first attack and movement. If you want to make another attack against this thing while it's prone, you can do that. Um, I think. Uh, well, okay. If I if I had landed on it, yeah, and it was it's not prone, would I be able to just like try and keep it pinned? Sure. So if you want to just try and grapple out. it, yeah, yeah. I'd say you've got it grappled right now. Yeah. So yeah, you don't even need to do a check. You've you've cool. got it grappled. If you just want to hold it in place, like pinning its throat down and its arms with your knees and stuff like that, you can definitely just keep this thing pinned. Yes, um, please. When you do that, when you land and you you're grappling this thing, you look up and you can see that there is a short trail that leads to the back of the temple, um, and you see that stood a little distance away. Um, from the day spa is you see a cadre of three figures and their hound having an argument. You can see uh, they were in the middle of like screaming at each other, like kind of like yelling at each other. One of them is drawn. You see the big, um, she was previously like a sun elf, but now you can see that she is not a sun elf anymore. You can see that the third mantle has become this like huge, overly muscular arm, like with a hunched back. Um, she does have this kind of red hair, but it's blood red dreadlocks kind of spilling down her face, big sort of tusks coming out um, and just this nasty, angry expression. Beside her is this pale, almost white skinned woman with this hideous smile that kind of goes way too far up her cheeks and her lips are scabbed red with like blood. Um, instead of lipstick and this very dark mysterious eyes her hair is like filthy and like stuck to her scalp um and then the third one is this previously you'd seen her as like a blind wood elf now she appears like a creature of the forest bark like skin this brown bark like skin covering her body um her body seems to be covered in like fungus and mushroom and growths and you can see beetles and insects crawling all up it and down it uh, and beside her is a dog with fire in its mouth uh and the two um, other the 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 large hag uh, Azrissa and Morgana uh, are turned on this blind woman, and they are like jabbing fingers, or at least they were. And then at the sound of the smashing oh, no. glass and the impact of stone, they have whipped their necks around, <laughs> and there is a look of stunned amazement uh, at what has just transpired. Is it too late to ask if I could have tackled him stealthily? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that one can shove a stone creature, a stone statue out of a window stealthily. That's, um, that's a good call. That's what you good think. Call. You never yeah, know until you think. try. No, that's, yeah. a, that's a good I'm, call. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm sorry. I know Chris probably would have just been like, yeah, sure. But I'm like, <laughs> nah. nah. To Nate, yes. But to anyone else, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna get the uh, the the coven stats up. <laughs> oh no, God! Well, I mean they're there. Uh -oh. They didn't go away. They <laughs> they, can just go away. The whole time. 
we like see Martin. each other as I have their statue pin and just like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. And they they're just dumbfounded. They're looking at you like, what the hell has just <laughs> happened here? What this what this session needed was a third combat encounter. So just we oh, a, yeah. a second here. Um, while I just add in another. To be combat. fair, you did put the barbarian in I, front of a window. I did. I did. <laughs> and he said yeah. window like five times. He was yeah. like, "There's a window." Yeah, because yeah, I wanted you window. to shove the statue out of it mm -hmm. so that I could have this happen. Yeah, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Uh, just like 18. you baited the lightning wizard into using a giant lightning spell against the things that are resistant to lightning. <laughs> yeah, but it was cool though. <laughs> It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Uh, right, okay. Those guys, so I will say that the hags, not expecting this in the slightest, are just, they're stunned. They are surprised. They're like, what the hell is happening? Had no expectation you were going to be there. Um, that's Clive's go. You do hear like a squeaking from up in the tower as you <laughs> left, but you don't hear or see anything else. Um, we go to, uh, we're going to jump back across to the, oh no, the golem can go, sorry. The golem is going to try and fight you back as well. Uh, it's going to try and break free of your grapple. So can you make another strength check for me with advantage? Mm -hmm. First one is a, uh, 23. 23. Okay. Yep. That's, that's enough. I got a 16. So, okay. Oh, it's two 23s. So. Yeah. So you are just, you've got this thing locked down. It struggles. It's trying to bring its arms to try and attack you, but it just can't break free of your, your vice-like grip on it. Uh, we jump back over to Azara in the bathhouse. Um, you do, you hear uh, for the first time from, uh, you know, since Tarkle's kind of just like calling out to them, you heard the hags bicker for a moment, then they went quiet. You could hear like murmuring of an argument. And then you just hear a, what the hell is he doing there? How did he get free? Uh, as what you hear being yelled. <laughs> Along with a... <laughs> Knowing what I know about Clive, I'm assuming Azara's like, ah, Clive escaped. Um, the, the lion's roar also might be a clue. That's probably, yeah. That yeah, as well, yeah. yeah I forgot All of that happening, Azara's down. like, ah, 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 ah. But is going to take care of the constructs before dealing with the whole lion fighting a hag thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to cantrip a, which is a wonderful clothing brand, um, firebolt at whichever is the least harmed. Okay. I'm going to tell you now, yeah. uh, because they, you have an enemy within five feet of you. If mm -hmm. you make a ranged attack here, it's at disadvantage and a firebolt is a ranged spell attack. Is there anybody that's further away that I can range? Uh, it, it's not that the targets next to you. It's because you have an oh, enemy. An next enemy. To you. Like, an it, enemy. It can be any, as general. long as you have an enemy. Cause like while you're trying to aim, they're like, yeah, they're trying, trying to fight to me. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, if you have like a touch spell, that's yeah. like really good. Yeah. Too um, bad it's shock and grasp. Ha ha ha. Uh, you also I have, have a spiritual question. weapon out. I do. I do have a question. Um, yeah. Azara and all of her uh, magical knowledge uh, would inflict wounds harm a construct? Um, it or does necrotic, necrotic damage. damage, yeah. Yes. These things, I would say, Azara, I'm not going to make you make a roll for this. Looking mm -hmm. at them, they at least have some false approximation of life. Like okay. their skin it is fat and tissue. It's like it's been layered onto them, but it's still a part of them. Right. Um, and they were seemingly acting like normal creatures. You think that at least the necrotic damage would affect this, this fake flesh. It would rot it and decay it and disrupt the tissue and stuff like that. So, Cool. Um, then I'm going to cast Inflict Wounds at the one that's right in front of me. Yeah, you've got two right in front of you, but one's right. really injured. The other one is fairly uninjured. Gonna do the fairly uninjured one. Okay, go for um, it. Um, which is a 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 to hit. 19 hits. Yeah. Cool. Again, these things are not particularly quick. You reach out, you you sink a hand or you touch its its cold, clammy flesh. Ew. Um, uh, that's 3d10 <laughs> at Lovely. first level because it's broken. Inflict Seven. Wounds is damn good spell. Uh, that's 15 points of necrotic damage. 15 points. Okay, so you watch as most like the tissue around this thing's chest just rots. It just decays and rots away as if time 
you know, like a rapid acceleration of decomposition just melts the flesh away. It does leave this kind of metal and rune scribed bone carapace where its rib cage would be. It's still standing, but you can see all of them now are desperately injured and broken in many ways, but still standing, just. Well, as my bonus action, I'm going to hit it with my spiritual weapon. Okay. Uh, that is 12, 18 to hit. 18 hits. Dope. Uh, and that's 1d8 plus 1. That is 5 points of force damage. 5 points of force damage. The spiritual weapon nearly finishes this thing off, but you can see that there's still just enough life left in it um, after the blow strikes, but the fan kind of carves down a radiant line of energy. Womp womp. That's it. Okay. Uh, we then would have Agnes, but uh, Agnes ain't here. Um, I'm trying to think of the best thing to do here. Um, Because they're going to attack Agnes, and also they will go before Tarkle goes. Do I want to make a quick... Can I just do Agnes? No, I don't want to take Agnes' turn away from her. Let's hold off on that then. Um, oh, goodness me, wouldn't this just be the perfect time to be like, and now a word from our sponsor, Cantrip Brand. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should brand. check out. Cantrip your one-stop shop for all merchandise Cantrip Brand. Available now at cantripbrand.com. Go check it out to wait, make wait. said purchase of things such as that, that I don't know if they are sold out at the moment, but things of the like, cantripbrand.com. Also not available messages. are the sold out dice vaults. Thanks everyone for purchasing. <laughs> I'm um, really good at helping advertise. <laughs> but you place. still can get things of the like, just not on that specific not medium of merchandise. Back to you, Mark. Thanks. Thanks, Cantrip <laughs> Brand. Uh, Agnes, uh, <laughs> it's your turn. Um, <laughs> this is why we cut to a commercial break. Um, nice. A really nice. successful one where Mika really helped. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so you can see um, Azara has just nearly destroyed one of these ones in front of her, but she has two enemies kind of encroaching around her, both heavily injured, but still threatening Azara, preventing her from using some of her more long range spells. Um, Tarkle's, you know, fighting them off and, and doing good damage to them, but you still have two of these things within melee range of you still kind of surrounding you, but they all look pretty injured at this point. Uh, I will yell to Azara, do you want out? Yes. All right. Then I'm going to have Candor fiery teleport Ooh. Azara out. Um, and I'm, I'm, am I close to Azara too? Yeah. You're next to Azara. Yep. Okay. So we're kind of like in melee range with the same. Yeah. It's kind of, um, you've got you and Azara and then sort of imagine that you've got one to your side and then Azara has two in front of her. So one, you've got one on you and then another one that's next to Azara also on you. And then Azara has two separate ones on her. All right. I'm going to, so I'm going to grab Azara and, um, Kander's going to fiery teleport both of us. And the great thing about fiery teleportation is it also damages all the enemies in a certain range. Sure. So, so uh, let's just understand this because I've got the map here. So you does Candor have to be next to you and Azara? Uh, oh, I'm gonna pull up the map too now. Yeah. So I've got a little. I've got a little birdie for Candor. He's the little oh, red squiggle. He's the little red squiggle. No, that's a bird. I see it. Yeah, you see it, right? Like yeah, you yeah, can no. see the vague the, the beak coming is going birdie this kind way, of. And yeah. Then the, yeah. Yeah. No. That's the wing. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Ten out of ten. Spurt. It's not like an Olympic logo where it could be other things. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's the spirit and any willing creature within five feet of it. Okay, so if you move like Candle here, you could hit you and Azara um, would be included. Um, and then it would hit the two uh, creatures next to it as well. Great. Let's and then, do and that. Then, and then how far do you teleport as well? I'm just going to have us teleport... To get some range and let's go ahead and just kind of teleport to this corner of the room sure yeah i think it's like 15 feet right so about there yeah okay cool and then um what how does the damage around uh candle work is that like a deck saving throw or each creature must succeed on a deck saving throw of dc 16 or they take 1d6 fire damage 1d6 plus 4 fire damage. both of them fail 
Huzzah! <laughs> they are very so they, slow. <laughs> they each take tw oh, 10 fire damage. 10 points of fire damage. So one of them is uh, engulfed entirely by the flame. It just incinerates whatever is left of this this construct this fake person um it just completely incinerates them and it leaves the other one a smoldering smoking walking you know form it, it, heavily damaged you can see the candles explosion erupts around them cool and then i'm just gonna take a little i'm just gonna i'm gonna uh, the walk one that died is the one that had your heat metal on it unfortunately oh okay so that's that's fine well I mean, it's working so far. So let's just let's just do another heat metal this time at the broke. third level because that's what I've got left. Sure. If it ain't, um, ain't broke, don't, don't fix yeah. it. Exactly. Um, so at higher levels, what changes? Let me see. I believe it's extra damage. Yeah, extra 1d8. So I'm going to get our other friend heated up here. Yeah. Which of the three would you like? You've got A... D and E. I'm gonna grab the one that is in uh this one right in front of right my in front row. Of circle. Okay, yeah. that is D. And that's gonna do three D eight plus one D eight. That's a lot of D eights. Sure is. Wow, that's twenty, and I think there's a, a plus. Jeez. Yeah, he no, 20. explodes from the inside. It's like a, it's one of the nail <laughs> technicians, and you just watch as there is a red glow inside their chest, inside this fake flesh, and then it just pops like. <laughs> yeah, it just blows okay. <laughs> as the spell incinerates it. Agnes is out. genuinely like surprised by this, but tries to play it off like, yeah. Oh yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Amazing. Anything else, Agnes, uh, on this incredibly successful turn? Nope, that's it. Okay. Uh, they One of them is just going to rush towards Agnes, and the other one is just going to attack Tarkle. They don't seem to have any sort of self-preservation. They don't seem to acknowledge that they're in pain or in danger. They are just attacking whatever they think is the, the most significant threat at the time. Um, their facial expression, whilst twisted in rage, they don't seem to scream or cry out or anything like that. Uh, so, Agnes, two attacks against you. Uh, first one's a miss. That's a natural one. Uh, second one's a natural two. That's a miss. Uh, ah. So this thing, you know, it's so badly damaged from all the fire and and the inflict wounds from uh, from it. Zaren, it's just like stumbling towards you, just unable to really do anything, um, just unable to uh, find any sort of attack pattern. Uh, and then Tarkle, uh, that is going to be... I've got to check this now. Um, that is only an 11 to hit. Does not hit. And then we have a 16. That just hits. Just hits. Uh, and then this is going to be... Do, do, do. That's going to be 13, 17 points of damage. I uncanny dodge. I uncanny dodge. That's eight points of damage then. Rounded down. Cool. Hey, yo, I'm going to use my uncanny dodge. Use my uncanny dodge. <laughs> Getting closer and closer to the Fast and Furious uh, one shot. <laughs> uncanny that we dodge charger. Oh! <gasps> oh! 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 Right, he did it. That's he did it. I actually tried. Yes. Is it? Holy yeah. shit. That's wow. Where's Dom's car. What are the chances? No, it's a, Ford. A, uh, a demon engine uncanny dodge charger. <laughs> God. Instead of yeah, instead of NOS, it's demon ick. <laughs> it's writing itself. Yeah, it does. I, the, the rules are in Descent into Avernus. So you just need to put it in Waterdeep, make it a heist. In, look, there you go. Waterdeep Dragon Heist yes! is already there. Yes. You can have Jar Laxel. He's involved, played by uh, Jason Statham. Uh, <laughs> Which one is the rock? Uh, ooh. I'm trying to think of who would be good. Maybe like Mert the Moneylender. <laughs> it's played go. by Dwayne the John <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, anyway, getting distracted. Uh, these two you things. You're totally uh, right, by the way, Mika. It is a 1970 Dodge Charger oh. for most of the series. <laughs> I thought it was a GTO, but maybe he just drives a GTO in one of them. There are nine of them. There are nine yeah, of them. That's a lot, yeah. Uh, I just remember like torpedoes being punched and stuff like that That's it did happen i don't remember the cars i remember the ridiculous action bits past in dungeons and furious and <laughs> dragons and guys <laughs> anyway um the uh sirena will just kind of move away and will just 
basically make the water acid again uh, to do some harm. So that's a D10. Ooh, 10. Oh, no, that's a one. Uh, oh. on this dice. Oh. I, I, I rolled a D100 and I was like, oh, a 10. No, that's one. Uh, so just a little bit of bubbling acid. Uh, damage, damage. Uh, Tarkle. Um, I, I'm sad because my sneaking will not be very attacky. Yeah. Uh, actually, hold on. Would you like to bonus action? Yeah, I think I'm just, I guess I'm just going to bonus action and, and disengage mm -hmm. and get close to a friend and say, hi, friend, and then uh, try to attack this one. <laughs> sure. Hi, friend. So you kind of almost uh, use the water, kind of kicking up a spray into this thing's face. It kind of blocks its, and then you use that moment, moment to kind of like, ha, ah, and like dodge to the side. And then he also critted, so... Ooh. Uh, yeah, this thing has uh, four hit points left, so yeah, <laughs> yeah it's dead. Uh, so you, you watch, it's, Tarkle looks amazing. Like, he splashes the water up into this other enemy's face. It, like, blocks, he leaps away, and then kind of moving through the water, um, you know, because you're running through, like, a swimming pool, basically. So it, you know, kind of almost, like, taking a moment to, like, dive forward. The Kiss of Silver just thuds into the back of this thing's head, and it just topples forward. Um, completely lifeless uh, as you do so. Anything else, Taco? Nah, no, nah, that's my turn. That's pretty good. Actually, I'm sorry. I have more movement left. Since that one's dead, I'm actually oh, yeah. I mean, going to convey... Um, my brain just stopped working for a second. I guess I'm not going to convey anything. I'm just going to walk towards the door. I'm going to go 15 yeah, more Yeah, so you can kind of get up out the water and yeah. uh, the the door, yeah, you kick open the door and it leads into the, into the hallway um, leading out. Cool. Cool. Uh, outside, <laughs> um, oh Clive, poor poor oh, Clive. Uh, the one of the 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 blind hag, uh, green bones, um, looks over and looks back at the two sisters. You fools! You were supposed to make sure that he was secured. You are attempting to blame me, accuse me of working with these fools. How do I not know that one of you did not want him to escape on purpose? Do not be blind. Do not be foolish, you old cretin. We know that you're hoarding the secrets to yourself. Deal with him. And they kind of just gesture. And you see the older hag turns, even though she's wearing this veil and seems to be blind, turns in your direction, Clive. And there's this moment where there's, you feel like there's this consideration uh, that goes, goes through their body. But they are going to cast a spell. Uh, and I would like you to make a... Wisdom saving throw. Okay. I've already used one dominate person, so that's a nine. Nine. Um, you feel your body slow down. You feel like it. Your movements become sluggish. Uh, this is the slow spell. Uh, your speed is halved. You have a minus two penalty to AC and Dex saving throws, and you can only make one attack per turn. Um, you can either use an action or a bonus action, not both. Uh, and you get to make the saving throw again at the end of your turn. But you feel your whole body just like. Well, upon taking damage or failing a saving throw, uh, I get to unstable backlash. Sure. <laughs> Go for it. All right. Come on. Come on, fun. Come on, something good. Huh. You teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. Well, uh, you can see like the path leading away. Each of these squares is five feet, by the way, on the map. So you're about mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, 30 foot will get you just before the door, not quite at the door leading into the spa. Um, the other thing I'll point out, Clive, is you can see that the large, uh, her name is Vile Sazza. The previous, previously was the Sun Elf. She's got your, the Eben, Eben Scorn sword in one hand. Um, your Morning Star is on her belt. I mean, she has a giant, uh, I think I gave her like a big club. Um, yeah, she is a two-handed maul. She has like a two-handed hammer resting over her shoulder. Um, but she does have your weapons on her. If I see that, I immediately just zip on over to that. Sure, yeah. Just teleport oh, straight to her. Love it, love it. So, there I go. Vam. Yeah, so you just, do you want to like teleport that's like right next to her and just be like, uh, as soon as you fail the same throw. So you're still slowed, like you, you're you reaching mm -hmm. out like and your body's moving in slow motion, but you you vanish there as the colorful magic teleports you where you want to go. Um, 
the the blind uh the blind hag is like what what happened uh and then you just hear vile sighs like the little kitty has come to play and she's gonna bring her maul straight down on top of you um bum, bum, bum. first attack is a 20 to hit that hits second attack is a oh it's my miss 14 that does not third attack what is a yeah, oh yeah uh this is gonna be a 22 yep okay so the first one is gonna be 14 uh 19 points of bludgeoning damage so half that to nine because you're raging um Uh, the next one is going to be 20, half that again to 10 because you're raging. So these two <laughs> huge blows kind of like push onto your shoulders, push onto your back um, as she brings this hammer down. <laughs> He's still standing. Uh, climb wow. the wild mane. Uh, I'm just going to try and get my weapons. Sure, yeah. If you just want to... Um, so the Morning Star is on her belt. I would say that you'd be able to grab your Morning Star without any sort of a pose check because it's just like tucked into like a belt, you know, tucked into like her belt. Um, okay. the, the the Ebon Scorn she's holding. So you'd have to contest strength-wise. And you, you got the impression that she's definitely at least as strong as you are when you when she hit you. I'm going to try for the you are... Morning Star then. Okay, yeah. You just Take grab that. You just snatch that... Um, pulling it free um and she's like ah <laughs> uh, she sort of grunts at you as you grab it um yeah i'd uh, say that's by the way that you can have that as yeah. a as a bonus as a free action oh cool say. then yeah. i'm i'll do i'll do a swing sure okay so you only we'll get one because you're slowed yep. um but you get the one swing all right one swing to end it all uh-oh 14 14 no it swings and you can see that this hag is actually very rare you see this hag is wearing like a breastplate and the morning star just against it uh <laughs> you'll have to hit me a bit harder than that kitty oh stop putting me out a penalty in a mate <laughs> oh no <laughs> this is how it comes out <laughs> yeah um at the end of your turn you do get to make another wisdom saving throw against the spell however all right all right all right uh 15 uh 15 now these guys do have different um spell save dcs because they're all different in magic uh unfortunately this the spell doesn't doesn't fade you are still slowed um this oh. she, you get the impression that the the green bones this this blind hag um she seems to be the more adept spell caster. you can see that like the way that she you know the, her equipment the way that she gestured to make the spell um she seems to be tailored to casting magic um Neat. that is clive's go uh let's jump in those guys are busy doing tower stuff those guys are gonna run down here let me just sorry i'm doing some for nicketing um so that i know where people are so they would get to yeah okay. it's a very pretty map mm -hmm. thank you it's made by i should point out by the way this map is uh, heroic maps uh they have a patron and they do stuff on dm's guild and they did like a whole colored you know virtual tabletop download of the maps in the adventure so big shout out to those guys i used a ton of their stuff um the door to the tower opens and you see uh you see this hunched form in the in the blanket kind of about to burst out when they see the statue and the the hags and that there and they just seem to be frozen for a moment uh the flying statue will stand up and then it will basically use all of its movement to chase after clive and that's pretty much all it can do because it has to dash so it just chases after clive like bleh, 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 coming after you meanwhile da, 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 uh we jump back to the bathhouse uh azara yeah um now i'm looking at this map mm -hmm. in front of me there is a large window correct uh it is yeah it's all stained glass um so uh -huh. it's like lead piping around the the shapes and things like that beautiful stained glass window uh, -huh. uh rising up between the the columns that you can see there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um <laughs> and if one were to uh exit through the window would it 
then put you in the uh, backyard where this battle seems yeah, to be taking it would. place. Uh, I will point the the water wouldn't spill out as a as a point. So the water is actually kind of the the windows are set into the wall above the pool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but it would also aid anyone that needs to rush in. Oh, I from mean, the yeah, outside. Like it, it, it would make it much, much faster to reach the outside, where you can hear the sounds of like these hags and right, right. And but say, say there. a lion needed to come inside where it was mm -hmm. safe. If there was a hole in the window, that would mm -hmm. aid this this said hypothetical lion. He really mm -hmm. likes holes in windows, anyway. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So there's one uh, construct left, and then lion boy outside. Okay. Cool. So. Uh, Azara is going to, now that there's range, firebolt this last construct. Love it. Um, which is a plus seven to hit, which makes that an 18 to hit. 18 hits, yeah. Easy. Cool. Um, and that's 2d10 of fire damage, which are these two. That is a three plus a 10, 13 points of fire damage. <laughs> one point over what you needed. So the firebolt ha! singes the creature's chest, kind of creates this hole going all the way through it, and it just falls over the construct. The last of these constructs finally defeated as it kind of stumbles back into the water completely out. Um, as a bonus action, uh, I'm going to send my spiritual weapon over to the window and kind of in like a very anime samurai dramatic like shing! I want to smash open the middle window and okay. yell to Clive and say, Clive, come where it's safe. And hopefully he'll come into the waters. As I'm completely Shh. surrounded on all sides, just like, yes. They don't know that. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh, sure. Let me just, let me have a think here. What would like okay. a moon do? Glass window. <laughs> well, it'd be pretty fragile, um, even though it's stained glass window. So yeah, just make a make an attack roll. This is going to be a pretty easy target to hit. And it's not going to have many hit points, but okay. um, the spiritual weapon is you know it is only got so much force behind it. Let's see if it can break it. Eighteen. Eighteen hits. Yeah, easily cool. enough. So just roll the damage. Uh, that is. Uh, That's force damage. I force damage. One d eight plus one. It's four. Four total. Four total force damage. Okay, so the, the spiritual weapon does cut through and, and sections of it do splinter and break, but it just doesn't have enough force to fully break the full window, but it's weakened now. Um, you can right. see that it's been cut through um, and parts of it do break. Um, this, the, the, the water spirit does make a, oh, Silvari's window. So there's like a kind of like, oh, the nice uh, windows. If Zara <laughs> um, sees they... that, she'll be like, I'll fix it. I promise, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you just hear like a kind of like, oh, sad. Um, but yeah, there you do see a part of it does uh, break, but not the whole thing. Right, um, but enough still... that if, if I yell, Clive can hear me through the window, right? Yeah, and you guys yeah. like, you can see a little bit through it now because the stained glass was quite smoky and clouded. You couldn't really properly see out of it before. There's enough that you can now see out into the garden. Um, but if somebody were to jump through it, they would need to probably make a strength check still to break through it or something like that, you know? Um, Agnes we have next. And then Tarkle, you're basically going to be going straight after Agnes because there's no more enemies in this room. So uh, so Azara didn't go charging through the window. She just broke it. Yeah, she sent the spiritual fans, this like got like golden white light fan cuts across the window, breaks a little bit of it, but not the full thing. All right. Uh, I'm going to take this, this relatively calm moment to cure wounds on myself at the fourth level. Okay, that sounds that's smart. And I also, um, just like fire damage spells, I get extra D8 yeah. with candor as well. So yes. that's going to be 5D8 plus 4. Nice. That's awesome. That's yeah. huge. And I need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that will be in a bad way. 23. Perfect. And then. Um, let me fix that before I forget. 23. Not 223, <laughs> sadly. Um, and then Candor, I guess, is near us. So I'm going to have Candor use all of their movement. I'm double checking their movement speed. I think it's just 30. Sure. 
I wish I knew I the wildfire drill. Week. I need to. I need to like learn it so I can help um, to quickly look at stuff. It's. I'm it's a... pretty sure their speed is just the same as I mine. So. Yeah. So I'm gonna sense. have Candor dash out as okay. far as Candor can get toward Clive. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'd say the hole is big enough for Candor. Uh, Thirty, and then if he's gonna dash, thirty-five. Well, Kander's spot where he is on the map is probably not where he is actually because we fiery teleported over into this That's corner. That's right. You, you teleported to yeah. here. So it'd be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. He can get to Clive, but it would risk an opportunity attack or he can get near Clive. I want to go as near as I can over. without an opportunity. No, he can fly, and I, he could literally go over them like that okay. rather than around them. So yeah, he can get to Clive. He's hovering above Clive's head right now. And since I dash, that's all I can do. But he's getting ready. If okay. if Clive has been paying attention to what Candor can do, he might notice that fiery teleportation could come on the next turn. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, I leave that to Clive. Tarkle. You're muted. I'm muted. Uh, I, when I heard when Targle heard the glass shatter a little bit, he turns around and says, "Oh, we we're breaking windows." I was, that's way quicker. Um, <laughs> so he'll go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, um, and then wait, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, um, and he'll throw his kiss of silver at the window to try to okay. break the rest of it. Sure, give me an attack roll and then damage. Uh, that's a crit. <laughs> <laughs> wasting wow. you still Crits. crit you wow. still crit no sneak, attack. No, no sneak attack so max the the dice then max the d4 for four and then roll another d4 okay yeah so then it would be is it like the d4 plus four max so is it eight and then plus another d4 uh, plus four so it would be it'd be d4 max so four, okay. four plus and then your plus... normal damage modifier and then okay. another d4 you roll that My so then yeah so then it would be the crit damage is eight and then this is seven so 15 15 points of damage is easily enough to shatter the rest of the window. Like with the weakening from, from uh, Azara's spiritual weapon, the Kiss of Silver finds that weak point that's been created and just, it just shatters, sending glass everywhere along the uh, sort of bottom area of it. It's kind of cool. And then since I move 20, I'll move 10 more and go right here and wait. Okay, sure. Uh, okay, nice. In that case, that is the end of Tarkle's turn. <clears throat> Dread Morgan stars in Gonya, actually. Uh, I think uh, the pre the woman that you knew is Morgana um, looks around and she's going to look back towards the spa. You see her glance towards the blind hag, Green Bones, um, kind of narrows her eyes and then looks back. Whatever game that you're all playing, keep in mind that we don't just have your little lion friend we've got your dear sweet blade captain who made a lovely deal with us as well don't you think you should come out we can negotiate you hear like a rasping writhe in her voice uh and bu -bu 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 she's going to turn around and look towards the doorway where Alyssa is um, and is going to cast Suggestion. I suggest you come over here, my dear. Uh, ooh, however, Alyssa rolled a natural 20. So you, um, you <laughs> see this kind of like shriveled figure like pulls the cloak. No, I don't want them to see me. Um, and just kind of like pulls herself back and you see Morgana's eyes kind of narrow, like defying me. Uh, however, the top of the round uh, is... <laughs> Uh, green bones um, she's gonna call out yes we should negotiate that handsome young man in there who seems to think we have some sort of a deal I'm more than happy to make one with you and you see that the other two kind of like turn their eyes towards her you mean us yes yes us a deal with us Uh, and then she will, she's actually going to command her hellhound to bite Clive. She's going to be like, get him. <laughs> and then this hellhound is like, rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> just comes. It. Uh, that's a 23 to hit, I'm afraid, Clive. Uh... Uh, for 10 points of piercing damage, so five, because you're raging. However, then 
at six fire damage. Oh, fire. no. <laughs> ah. is, this a new, is this a new round? Yes, this is. So this is at the top because I've had to add them into the combat. Um, so it's them. <laughs> now the big one with the maul goes and then it's you. <laughs> okay, so that means I get a new reaction. Uh, not yet, because it's not been your oh. new turn yet. Oh, it's, sorry. The big it's lady goes, the and then it's you. Okay, gotcha. Because um, you've used your thing since then. So right, I'm trying to keep sense. a track of this all in my head. So uh, she, the the big one, is going to look at you, Clive, and say, grovel. And I want you to make a wisdom saving throw. I'm just going to cast command. All right. Uh, ooh. Uh, 17. Okay, yeah, this one doesn't seem to be as as willful in their magic, um, and y there's something the pride of the wild mane. You're not groveling, not to anybody, and so like you just kind of rebuke the effort uh, as she tries to command you down to your knees. I like go to flip her off, but it's real slow. It's like, <laughs> um, it's just like ah, stubborn little beast, Clive. Uh, all right. I, I, uh, hmm. I'm going to close I, this I'm, encounter now. I'm going to, I'm going to swing. Who, who looks the most, uh, swingable at? Who's the least? Um, yeah, I'd say that you'd be able to work that out. So I would say that the one, uh, the big sun elf, um, who seems to go by the name Val Saza, uh, they're wearing armor. You can see that mm -hmm. they seem to be more of a martial fighter. Uh, the one behind her, the one with the black hair, um, definitely doesn't seem to be wearing any physical armor, but there is a kind of shimmering magic around her. Um, yeah. And then the blind uh, hag called Greenbones, um, all they have is like this bark skin. That's the only kind of defense that they seem to have. That's what I'd say you can see. I'm going to swing at... The or the hellhound, skin. which doesn't have anything. It's just a hellhound. Um... Okay, another question. So yes. my my uh, uh, oh, what is it? My backlash wouldn't happen until the end of my turn now, right? Or is uh, it so your your turn has begun, so you get your reaction back now. Okay. So then I have a I have a follow up question. <laughs> okay. Would I be able to attack in a way? Let's say a sloppy headbutt that though Trigger it would on yourself. that yes, it would deal damage to myself. If mm. I were to like nose swat where it would clearly hurt. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It has to be an unarmed strike. You can't use yeah. your weapon for it. Um, yeah. and then I'll have you do damage back to yourself. <laughs> okay. So That's the weird. unarmed strike, and I'm gonna do it on the on the hellhound. Okay, so you just like try and headbutt this fiery beast. Yep. Okay, so, so that is a 27 to hit. Okay, that hits. So what's your normal unarmed strike damage? Five. Five points of damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll have the Hellhound take five, and then you take two points of damage. Okay. Because <laughs> now... it's, it, well, actually, no, I'd say you take two points of damage, but I'm going to roll a d6 of fire damage because it's a flaming hellhound. Oh, yeah. Well, that's you, take four more, you take four more fire damage. Okay. <laughs> but you're weighing, like... weighing my actions, but that's okay. And now we're going to roll again. I what do it. we got? This is just <laughs> pure chaos. It makes oh, no sense, but I love it. I got the eight. So that is, uh, that is the beam. Bolt of light shoots from your chest. Another creature of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you must succeed a constitution saving throw. Awesome. Uh, You've got okay. plenty of targets. You've got yep. five things around you right now. Jesus. Okay, so I'm going to I, I'm gonna I'm gonna target the the armored one. She seems okay. to be the most threatening. Sure. Yeah, the big armored lady. All right. Uh, that's a natural one for a total of six. All right. So that is going to be uh, one D, let's see, constitution, one D six. So it moon. is four radiant damage, and she is blinded. 
Oh, okay. So yeah, you lean. You, okay, so this is the sequence of events. You headbutt this hellhound. You get fire blast in your face. The blindfolded hag, it just screams, Morty, my boy, when you headbutt him and just turns on you in rage. The big one, though, laughs like when you headbutt this this dog. Ha, foul beast deserves it. And then you turn up and this beam just hits her in the face. Ah! She just screams and like clutches her eyes and is swinging the hammer around. Um, yeah, and it's still your turn. That was only one attack, by the way. So you have another attack. Um. Oh, do I still get two attacks? I thought I was under the thing. Yeah, no, because like when it, like I'd say the headbutt was just like an attack. Like you can do something else. No, but I thought that I only get one attack. Oh, that's right. Slowed. You're slowed. No, thank you, Nate. Yes, you're correct. You are slowed, mm -hmm. so you only. Get so one. it's like. <laughs> Perfect. Oh um, so yeah, you just see this chaos unfold. Um, <laughs> Dread Morgan is just like, oh, for, by, uh, for devil's sake. And it's just like despairing at this scene as like the, the, the blind hack is like petting the hellhound, like my poor boy, my poor boy, and, like petting him like he's been hurt. Um, uh, Azara, <laughs> it's your turn. Does Azara see all of this happen? Yeah, you can oh see it through God. the now smashed open window. Oh, that's our Clive. Um, no, it's a good distance. Like it's it's sort of right. you know nearly ninety feet away, but you can see it through this right. broken window. Good, good, sweet lord. Um, what can I do? Ah, uh, in my arcane knowledge, I feel like I say this every round. <laughs> I I would know that these you're, hags, you're a sorcerer, of course. You get to know arcane stuff. Arcane knowledge. I would know that these hags are are freaking scary, right? Like, I would say. These don't seem to, I mean, their power, their power level uh, <laughs> outweighs, you've not seen hags of this kind of skill of magic. Like these okay. must be pretty powerful hags. In terms of the spells that you've seen them cast, mm -hmm. you know, that one of them looks very strong, mm -hmm. but the magic they've cast, it's not like these are arch mages or arch druids. Like they're right. not completely beyond your own ability. Right. Um, they're powerful. And it seems to be that, you can see that whenever they cast a spell, there's energies drawn from all three of them. It mm. seems that they have to be near each other to use their their coven power. Um, gotcha. Okay. Well, knowing that and see. Oh, Nate has a thing. Sorry. Quick thing. I didn't roll to break. You didn't floor. do a saving throw. Okay. Good shout. Wisdom Sorry, saving throw, please. Well, whatever. That's a three. Okay. Yeah. It's well. still slow. <laughs> um, Azara will focus on Mor Morgana, but not Morgana anymore. Dread Morgan is Dread, Dread Morgan. Name. That's her hag name. <laughs> she right. has they have a hag name and then they have a fake name. Um it's like yeah. a drag name. <gasps> hag yeah. name drag name. <laughs> um I, I don't I can't repeat. I came up with a drag name for myself once uh, as like a DD inspired drag act, and uh I can't repeat it on this channel because <laughs> it's oh! really rude. <laughs> but I'll tell you in I'll tell you in our Discord. Um, I'm very excited to hear this. Um Azara will get a little bit closer um to the window. Uh, just sure. so Dread Morgan, <laughs> Dread Captain Morgan can see out. Yeah. Oh, no. Captain Morgan. Oh my God. <laughs> you can't repeat sorry, it. Sorry, audience. Sorry, that, audience. You sorry. Can't know what that is. It's, it's not oh. that funny. It's like, totally, don't worry about it's, it. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No. Um, and <laughs> Shady's dead. And Zara will call out to, to Dread Morgan and say, uh, as convincingly and and seducingly as possible. Oh. She kind of flip her hair and she'll kind of use the water to like get her. Dress are you moving up to the window, by the way? A or little you... bit, like 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 five, ten, like right here, like a little bit behind Tarkle. Okay, it's gonna be hard to see you from there. Okay, next, as close. How 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 many feet can I go? Where can I go? I would. I'd, you can go thirty feet. I'd say if you want to be seen, you yeah. kind of have to get to at least. Like, here. I'd say you have to be up by the window. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, 5, 10, 15, 20. You can get there though. You, okay. you have enough movement. But, All right. Yeah, I want to get up to the window there. and I kind of sure. want to like lean, lean out, out of it. Yeah. Like, exactly. like very, you know, um, and she'll turn her attention towards Dread Morgan. Oh, and the, and the, the fan is going to kind of blow her hair okay. to, yeah. to really make this seductive. And, sh and she'll say, well, if we're talking about making deals, why don't 
you come over to our side since your sister seems to have already betrayed you and and we would never i i would never betray you <laughs> i would like azara yes. to make a i'll leave it to you whether this is deception or persuasion <laughs> it's going to be persuasion sure 24 24 <laughs> so <clears throat> she looks back Dread Morgan. And in, in the thing is, is like as Zara's doing all of this, you are looking at a nightmarish creature. All of that beauty, all of that elegance has gone. Her limbs are like stretched out like Slender Man's. Her <gasps> mouth curves way too up. And like where it's, it looks like she's wearing lipstick, but it's like red scabs just cover all of her lips. And there's this thick, oily black hair that spills down her body. She turns around and it's, she just grins. It's like, and it's it's gross. Azara um, like fights back bile, but is still like yeah. being seductive. I oh well, I can see right through the uh, attempt, but I'm I'd be lying if I said I wasn't allured by it. You seem to be a woman who knows what she wants. <sighs> she looks back over at Gr uh, Green Song, and you can see that this chaos, like. The other hag is like tending to her dog. The other one is like blinded. And more and you see, Azara would recognize this from days in the court. You see the look in someone's eye of an op of recognizing an opportunity. And she looks back. And she will let's see if there is a way that she can. Yeah, she will, she'll move over. Um, she moves closer uh, and she looks up. I will slow opportunity attack, like doesn't hit, but just as she's uh, This one was a bit too far away, Clive. She was behind uh, the big sun elf, unfortunately. So you're like- Still just takes a swing, just yeah. <laughs> come <laughs> back here. <laughs> Slides through. Uh, Morgan like, comes up and- I won't keep the round going too long because it's only supposed to be six seconds. But you you see that recognition of oh, an opportunity, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I think that that's okay. Well, oh. wait, wait, it, it would be her turn next, actually. Oh. So she she looks up and says, "Let's make a deal. I want. I'm sick and tired of those two idiots ruining things for me." You want your little friends back and alive, I'm assuming. Take out one of them. I'll let you go. I think, and Azar will kind of like look back at her companions. That is absolutely doable for, for our team. And we would be happy to have you. And Azar's like really trying hard, even though this woman's disgusting. She's yeah, like, of course. Yeah. And, and, have you, and on our you can see that she, she can see through the, right? the obvious deception. She loves yeah. it. She loves that you're trying this. <laughs> like she can see that there's a, 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 a kind of um, an appreciation of the hustle, right? Oh. Like she, you know, it's kind of like a like- Game yeah, recognizes like, That was game. a horrible pickup game line, recognizes... but I like that you're trying. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, and she points and she she points at Green Song. The big brute I can deal with. That one needs to die. Consider it done. She just nods. Agnes. Well, if that's our goal, having heard that, Agnes is going to walk up right behind or like maybe kneel kind of by the windowsill right next to Azara. No. Um, I'm trying to have kind of like half cover if I can. Yeah. And then I'm sure. going to shoot Galath Galathalir, the guiding light. Okay. My special um, special arrow that is called spell guiding shot. Yes. So if I hit um my enemy it will outline the target in silvery light that pulls magical energy toward it for one minute any spell attacks made against the creature have advantage and the target has disadvantage on any dexterity saving throws against spells so this is the first time you've used it so you pull out this beautiful elven bow and it seems to shine with moonlight um, a white pale glow surrounds it and there's no string there's no arrows instead as, you, as soon as you go towards where a string would be 
a thin line of moonlight just seems to and as you pull it back it's almost like a like a liquid flame appears as where an arrow would be and you kind of lean out and uh so yeah go ahead and make an attack roll please hit uh, 19 19 will hit i'm just seeing if i have any sort of shield spell i do not so yeah you watch as this this oh that would be 20 because of the plus one sorry <laughs> collides into the plus one should be encountered if it's in dnd beyond it should add the uh plus oh okay one from it being magic yes weapon. uh but yeah it strikes uh great green auntie green bones the uh, the blind looking elderly hag and it's gonna also do eight piercing damage okay. Eight piercing as damage. As well as outlining the... Yeah. Yeah. So you watch as this silvery fire seems to just spread over this hag. Ah, what is this? Ah, my, ah, Morgan, what are you doing? Um, and you just see Morgan kind of like looks. Nothing. Just holds her hands up. Um, uh, it's not my fault if you can't deal with a little bit of elven magic. Uh, and you see her surrounded. And Azara, you can feel this like there is almost like a force to this moonlight and you can feel it connecting with your own magic, almost wanting to draw it in um, as you do so. Uh, that's Once that's used, um, Agnes, there is the specific ways to recharge it on those. Yeah. So once you've used it, it's done mm -hmm. until you recharge it. All right. Anything else, Agnes? Cool. cool uh, I think it actually counts as a bonus when I create that arrow. So I've taken an action and a bonus action already. Perfect. So we go to Tarkle then. Um, I want to do a really, really cool stunt out the window and in midair, throw my kiss of silver. <laughs> so like straight up, almost like, can I, can I jump off of, do I have to, well, I'm in the water right now, right? I'm just yeah. imagining yeah, Tarko like being like, parkour, parkour. Yeah. And like, <laughs> like I'm, I was thinking of potentially jumping off of Agnes's shoulders, but I don't think Tarko would do that. Um, so well, I think he's these just, big columns. There's like these big tall columns. It's gonna um, do like a pew pew, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you kind of like back, like do a little tumble out outside. Yeah, mm -hmm. easy. but mid air when I'm going to tuck, I throw my kiss of silver. Sure. Well, um, where do you, would you want to move yourself to? Like, so you kip out the window mid air. You're gonna make the attack. Would you want to move yourself to wherever you want to go? Yeah. So I yeah. So basically, I mean, I would. I guess I technically would make the attack bef like with this much movement because I would yeah. land here. Like, sure. it's fine. Oh, you want to land on the glass. Oh, no, no, I don't. That's class there. I want to land here. Uh, this one, this square right here. Oh, no, no, okay. no, no. Yeah, easy. Yeah, I thought that forward. blue stuff was just secret glyphs for us no, to discover no, after that was the, the battle. Because the, the stained glass window was broken. So yes, had, like, yes. All the broken oh, that's glass, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I want to land there and then throw the kiss silver at green song. Uh, Go for it. 20. Remember when I was getting all those crits, guys? Not this time, because I rolled a one. Do -do 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 -do. Oh. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -bum. So the the very you know in midair, you kind of spin your body to throw this thing. Um, as the kiss of silver disappears from you, and it, she just reacts in a bizarre way, like she kind of tucks herself in, surrounded by this fire, almost like trying to put herself out, and it causes the attack to just—it's just pure luck on her behalf that this attack sails uh, mm. sails past. Um, anything else on your turn, Tuckle? Uh, I think then I will. I'm gonna end up. I'm gonna try to walk through the space of since this lady is allied with us. Can I do that? Does she allow me to? I'm wondering if she allows me to. Yeah, I'm wondering that too. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's not a nice person. I'm like, yeah, but oh. she wants us to take out her sis. Also, you know, damn titties don't want to betray oh, those. They are pretty loose and low, though. You know, like they are drooping. But Azara's um, aren't, you know, and she's oh, right. trans she Azara's Azara titties. Like you said that in they're, my they're, let's from, let's from, establish from the, the exact spring. description. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I thought that that's what. Uh, never mind. So you leap out. She does let you move past, almost kind of like, um, almost like courtly lets you pass, like almost mm. like you know allowing somebody to pass her in a corridor, um, as you do so. Yeah. So then I would I would just end up standing. Uh, I have five more feet, so I would stand here. Okay, sure. Uh, okay, Clive, you're going to get a reaction here because the Hellhound, having seen um, Agnes lean out and take the shot at its master, the Hellhound comes barreling towards that window. Did Kander um, get his turn after Agnes? That's up to Agnes. Did what, sorry? 
Did Tander go? Oh, I he couldn't because he has to go on my bonus action. And I oh, used... there you go. My bad. Yeah, you have to give him an order as a bonus mm -hmm. action. Uh, so, uh, Clive, you get an opportunity attack if you'd like to use your reaction. But keep in mind, you won't get a uh, reaction rage thing if you do. Um, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna take it. I'm let him okay. Go. Nice. I'd rather uh, roll on the table. The hellhound leaps up onto the edge of this, onto this window, looking at Azara and Agnes, and it is going to breathe a cone of fire into you. Well, that's um, rude. Agnes, you did say that you were kind of crouched in the water, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm like just peeking Half over the submerged. window. So. I'll give you. I'll give you resistance to fire because the water would counteract some of the flame. Um, but you both need to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Uh oh, it's a seven. Seven. You said I get advantage. Uh, no, you have resistance <laughs> to the fire damage. Well, I well, rolled a six. Okay. Oh, I rolled pretty bad. 19 fire damage, so half that to 10 for fire resistance um, for Agnes. But yeah, 90 fire damage is this cone of flame just Rude. erupts through. It seems like I should be resistant to fire as like a rule. <laughs> just seems I like. Mean, it does seem so, huh? You, seems... you message Jeremy and the D&D &D class team. I Excuse think. me, Jeremy Dungeons Crawford? <laughs> yeah. Wildfire Druids should Wild be resistant should to be fire immune to fire and have uh <laughs> six million hit points mm -hmm. jeremy mm -hmm. dungeons crawford and chris yeah. dragons perkins exactly yeah uh okay let's jump i'm just looking i'm conscious of the time and i'm conscious of all the madness that's going to happen here i'm gonna because this is a fresh round i can reset my encounter so i can add all the proper creatures in <laughs> I'm going to call the episode here so we can do shout outs and stuff. And we've got people that need to shoot off. White text friend needs to go. Uh, we're going to continue this madness in the next episode. Um, yes. Yeah. Like th things are changing. There are allegiances being formed. <laughs> are they going to last? We don't know. Uh, we'll see how it all goes. Um, this is crazy, man. I did not expect all this. Remember when, when we... you're like, mm -hmm. this will be three episodes maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's so here's the thing, right? The the whole idea of the adventure is like you guys could have come in, just had a lovely spa time, uh -huh. had like a lovely treatment, and like, oh, I've I've got this amazing cool new thing, and then left, and then <laughs> maybe have. maybe like next season some other stuff happens, and you have to come back to do other things. You oh. know, um, that was that was a potential way of using this adventure, right? Is that like players can just come, have a lovely time, and then they they go away, and then they come back later on for something else, and other things have happened. Um, but this one, it was a case of like, yeah, you guys were suspicious enough, and there was enough things going on where you're like, mm, something's going on here. Let's get to the bottom of it, and then it all kind of went downhill. <laughs> Oops. What we've yeah. really what we've really shown is just how much you can get out of the content of Candlekeep. You know, mm -hmm. like this is just one story. This is I mean, just I mean, one of seventeen adventures. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if I hadn't bought Candlekeep Mysteries by now, I sure would. <laughs> I sure would. Well, on a very serious note, are you guys enjoying the adventure? Like, yes. obviously, yes. like you know, 100%. I know it's gone on a bit longer. I, I think that yeah, we've been having a lot of fun with it, but obviously, it's good as a DM to check in and make sure that everyone's having fun this has been like three weeks of combat but i think that it's been enough where things have been changing and like stuff's happening that it doesn't just feel like attack roll attack roll attack roll right like it's yeah i think this has been the most fun that i've had playing D, &D in a really long time so <laughs> yay that's, that's the big thumbs up that's the big happy dm smile cool let's do shouts start with anna okay uh, well, if you haven't, if, if you're like, you know, I sure would love some clothes to wear that subtly display my fandom and start conversations with people who know about things I like, but also just look real cool, even if someone doesn't understand them, have I got a website for you. Visit cantripbrand.com for all of your streetwear fantasy needs. Cantrip, everyday magic. Everyday magic. Love uh, it. And you can follow me at Anna Prosser on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and my website. I am fighting a vocal cord nodule, so I've been kind of quiet, and I really appreciate everyone who has been sticking with me. Uh, hopefully, it will get better, and I can do more stuff soon. Yeah. 
I tag Nathan. Hello. Uh, NateWantsTheBattle.com slash tour. Uh, I'm going on tour with some music friendos. We have, I believe, two dates are already sold out and a few other dates are closing in. So get your tickets before they're gone. And also, yeah. you know, make sure you're uh, vaccinated before you go to the show so that you don't get other people sick. And just, you know, not just for the show, but for the good of fellow man, Shady. Hello, I'm Shady. Hello, man. I uh, don't have much going on. So I want you to make sure that you get three servings of vegetables tomorrow, not today. I tag Mika. Thank you, Dad. Uh, <laughs> Also, make sure to check out his streams because he's cool. Yeah, I was going to say, like, and you his YouTube channel because he's to talk cool. About and we love Shady. Um, hi, I'm Mika Burton. You can find me at Mika Burton on most places. Also, you can follow my horseback riding Instagram at Mika Strides. I'm preparing for my first competition, which will be uh, the first week of September. So you're going to see me in fancy horse clothing, jumping over fancy walls at high speeds on a 1,200 pound animal because I am insane. Um, also, my birthday's uh, soon, so birthday! <gasps> Yay! Birthday. Yay. Um, that's it. I'm. I have lots of stuff under NDA. Mark, go. Man, you just just talking about like running around on horses though. Like, what if they did a fantasy version of Fast and the Furious where it's all about horses <gasps> and, like, riding horses around? That'd be dope. Oh my god, uh, Mark! Please, Mark! Please, anyway, Mark, please uh, write that. Please no. write that charity stream. <laughs> <laughs> you can check out i actually did the complete tangent but i actually did a we did a convention game for high rollers which i'm going to talk about in a minute <laughs> called the swift and the sorceress which was about driving magically powered cars on a race and it was kind of a bit more wacky races than fast and the furious but it was like a mixture of both um but i was very pleased with the name the swift and the sorceress i was like pretty good that's, pretty that's great. a winner um <laughs> maybe i'll revise it and, and do a new version yes. uh Speaking of High Rollers, uh, that's my other D&D show that I do that I've been doing for a long time. We just, in fact, celebrated it. our second campaign has been going three years. It was our th uh, third birthday on Sunday. We've been doing that campaign. Um, the players and the fans put together a beautiful video, which made me cry uh, on stream um, because it was oh, like wow. a kind of super whole wholesome, heartfelt, you know, people talking about the show and stuff like that. And so if you want to see me crying live on Twitch... <laughs> Um, come and check that out. Uh, you can also find it on YouTube, uh, High Rollers D&D, podcast, Spotify, iTunes, all of that good stuff. High Rollers D&D, that's my main show. Um, apart from that, um, that's it. Just follow me on Twitter. I generally post if I'm doing anything extra over on there. Sherlock underscore Humes. That's it from me. Um, thank you, White Text Friend, uh, for all your hard work as always. White Text Friend, bless. Love you, White Text Friend. Thank yeah. you. And uh, we'll be back for more Nights of Evening Star next week. Until then, enjoy all the rest of the content on the D&D Twitch channel. Bye. Bye-bye.